We're going to take a deep dive into Arduino today. So let's get going. Hi, I'm Tom Kovichak, and this is Tom Strains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And you know I like to talk about Arduino. And I found somebody else who knows a lot more than I do about Arduino, and I have him as a special guest today. And that's Hans Tanner. So let me put this clip up about him, and then we'll bring Hans on. Over the course of the last 10 years or so, interconnection of small devices really has taken off. Using technologies commonly referred to as the Internet of Things or IoT, pretty much everything that has a built-in microcontroller got connected to Wi-Fi and the World Wide Web and you are now able to set the temperature of your living room from your smartphone even when traveling on the other side of the planet. How convenient! And so I thought it is time to extend IoT to the last unconnected category of electrical equipment in our hobby rooms, the model railroad layout. That's why I created the IoT channel, which stands for Internet of Toy Trains. In my videos, I focus on how to connect layout components and control systems to each other, to other systems in the house, and even to the Internet. Typical videos are centered around microcontroller hardware, the firmware that is needed to make them work, mostly Arduino based, as well as control algorithms and communication protocols to make them communicate and cooperate to run the trains. Yes. For most people, these are boring technical details, but just in case you like that stuff, welcome to the IoT channel. I am Hans Tanner. How you doing, Hans? I'm glad you can make it here. Uh, I you. noticed on your on your uh, on your short clip about your channel, you have a layout in the background. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that layout? Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, that's not my layout. <laughs> it is. Um, from a train museum actually in Hendersonville. So it's a pretty good size layout in, a, a tra in an old train station. Uh -huh. And they have um, a huge HO layout and they also have a garden scale layout outside. So it's really um, a nice place to go and vi visit. It's um, Hendersonville near Asheville, North Carolina. Do you have a layout of your own? Uh, only testing stuff. <laughs> only, only testing stuff. Yeah, that, that's that's how mine is right now. <laughs> yeah, I have uh, one under construction for about 40 years, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there is always something else coming up. You know? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. How did you get started in Arduino? Oh, well, that is like a long time ago when uh, Arduino came out. I mean, I've been in um, in microcontrollers and stuff ever since, I guess. I mean, I, I studied electrical engineering around like 30 years ago or so, and then went for a robot, uh, went to work for a robotics company in Switzerland. So that was like mid eighties. And then um, ever since I've been involved somehow, and then uh, Arduino came out and it was like a real nice little um, board that has everything on it. I mean, before I I did some PIC programming and stuff like that, but that was always kind of like cumbersome. Uh, and the Arduino was one of the first, I guess, user compatible boards, if you want, that you just can uh, uh, hook up to your um, to your computer and program it. Everything just from like from the computer, and that of course makes it very convenient. So I did a few projects. Probably the first ones, maybe 15 years ago or so. So I don't really know. Well, that, that's and, a long time. <laughs> that's a long time yeah. ago. I I only I only got uh, interested in Arduino back in I think it was about 2013 or 2014. I didn't know anything about it before that. Yeah, before I did um, some Windows programming for uh, model railroads as well. Maybe um, you remember the uh, Winlock software, which was the uh, first one that that supported the Digitrack system mid '90s. That was my software essentially. Mm -hmm. I was the first one um, uh, who who uh, supported uh, Loconet 
uh, from Windows computers at the time with the MS-100 interface, which was a nightmare. Um, and then later on the local buffer came out and so on. So uh, that just, yeah, that was like a development. I started the whole thing while I still was living back in Switzerland. And um, we moved here uh, to the U.S. in 1997. So it's a long time ago. Yeah, that, that, it is a long time ago. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about uh, your devices that you've made. Yeah, that's a modular concept, if you want. Uh, I'm, I'm really involved in modular design uh, of products. I mean, that's my professional life as a, as a management consultant. I did a lot of work for um, automotive companies, um, developing platform concepts and things like that, but uh, also for a lot of other industries. The idea of doing modular development, so developing modules that you can mix together uh, in various combinations and, and make it work with like a minimal efforts, that's, um, that's kind of like fascinating. And um, with the components that I have in, and that I also show in the IOTT channel, uh, I try to do the same thing. So um, I did, you would call that the functional decomposition of what you need to um, run a model railroad. And, and you see there is like, you need to have some sort of an interface to communicate. Then you need to have a processing module that does all the algorithm stuff. You need some output modules. And if you look at what's available on the market, most manufacturers um, combine these things together, which from a marketing point of view has some merits because you want to sell something at the end of the day, right? You don't want that people combine too much, but I kind of like took that stuff um, uh, apart. And so started doing like a Loconet interface, a DCC interface. And then I found this little microcontroller, this uh, M5 stick, um, which is an ESP32, which you can um, program uh, from, from the Arduino IDE, and it's a pretty powerful machine. Um, so I use the interfaces that that little machine has to connect my interfaces to it. And so uh, it has a Wi-Fi built in as well, so now you can uh, access the whole thing from uh, from a browser for configuration and then you can use the same device essentially to connect either to Loconet or DCC and then have some, um, I call it head modules um, that provide some functionality like for example um, a, a button input module where you can connect uh, um, uh, current sensors to it um, or also input buttons for act for activating something or then there is the, the green hat that you are kind of like using the software for for the servo uh, that you are playing with which is just a 16 channel um, uh, servo decoder basically that can then depending on what interface you connect to it um, you can use it with DCC, you can use it directly with Loconet, or you could even use like local input buttons, things like that. So that's what I'm doing. And right now I'm uh, working on extending that um, model idea to command station. So I'm going to use some modules that I already have uh, together with the uh, DCC++ uh, code and an, an additional Arduino bo uh, board as a DCC signal generator. And that's just the next step now. If model railroaders wanted to get those items, uh, where would they be able to get them? Or are they available? Well, they are. Uh, the best thing is probably they watch a video or two from my uh, YouTube channel because uh, that describes the whole thing. But you can actually buy the modules on the Tindy store, and that's referenced in the um, um, in the YouTube channel or okay. in the descriptions of the individual videos. All right, great. All right, Han. So, in, in the in the past, we've noticed that uh, there's a lot of modelers that are going over their head in uh, trying to uh, create sketches or reproduce sketches that is way beyond their uh, level of expertise. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you came up with uh, three categories to talk about the levels of expertise in Arduino. So, would you like to talk about that? A little bit like your category one, which is a standalone projects. 
Yeah, that's the way how I look at it. You know, everybody has his uh, career, how you make progress on Arduino. Um, uh, typically, most folks, um, they first just have the wish to be able to do uh, something like that and don't know how to program it. So they read a few things and then start their first example sketch. And that's normally where it starts. Uh, and, and sometimes they make the mistake that you addressed in your uh, a recent video that they just download a ways too complex uh, sketch from somewhere and then cannot make it work and go to the Facebook groups. And, yeah. <laughs> and whenever you try to explain them something, um, it's like staring in a black hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, uh, but I think, yeah, there is something like career path, um, so to speak. And I think if you're more like a beginner programmer the things what you would like to do is simple things that run like on its own that have not much communication yeah maybe an input button or something like that so you press a button and then like an led goes on or something like that and that sounds very easy but you can you can do quite quite complicated stuff with that just look at uh, some animated models, for example, uh, where you have a, a button to start a time sequence with, I don't know, 25 or 50 different statuses following that, right? Like, for example, a high race with like the lamps going on in different um, uh, apartments in it or offices whatsoever. Or if you look into some models, like, for example, helicopters or trucks or whatsoever that sit somewhere on the layout, like a police scene that can where you can put on the sirens and the blinking lights and uh, and all that. That can be fairly complex, but it's still kind of like contained on like one Arduino with a few outputs, a few LEDs, maybe a button. Then you use a few timers uh, to maintain the sequence. And that to me is kind of like the first category that that you should kind of like master. And you can do quite a lot. Um, do quite developed uh, code, uh, just making that work. And it's it's fun to, to get started, but you don't have to deal with what then would be part of category two. And that is stuff that takes like signals uh, from the outside, for example, decoding a DCC signal or connecting to local net and things like that. And then activate, for example, a switch or something like that. That's normally already more complex because um, these signals require a certain timing uh, that you have to meet. Normally, that's where interrupts come into play and things like that. So you have to understand a little bit more about the inner workings uh, of the microcontroller. So that's why I would say, yeah, get started with like fun projects on level one. And then when you, when you feel ready, <laughs> read a little bit more and try something. Uh, on category two, right? Yeah, get get your feet wet with, with category yeah. one before yeah. you step into the yeah. into deeper and waters. Yeah, things, right? have something that you can show to others and, and things like that. But, yeah, yeah, know. yeah. That's why I like to stick with uh, simple things on there. I did the course on Arduino made easy with the er in the parentheses yeah. because Arduino is easy to begin with. But yeah. it seems like you know if if people don't know anything about coding, they still find it difficult to learn the syntax of it. That, that That's probably the hardest part of the coding. Yeah, is, because it, it's a C syntax and that's not the easiest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. And in, in different languages, you might be able to code something in one language. And then when you get to Arduino, which is similar to it, but you have all these little changes in it that yeah. makes it different. Yeah, on the other hand, um, you know, the uh, the basic concepts are the same in every programming language. You need to know like what a loop is, like a for loop, a while yeah. loop. Um, so those those basic concepts of branching, uh, you need to know what the global, what the local variable is. You need to know what the pointer is. And maybe that's already level two, right? <laughs> um, but things like that. And that's that's the same. In, in every language, in every programming language you see, and then it's just a different syntax. That's like you you explain something in German or in English or in French. So uh, the punctuation and the words may be different, but the content then is the same. And once you know how, how that works, then it becomes relatively easy to translate from one syntax to the other, I found. Yeah, yeah. When I started programming, all my 
Um, my Windows programming I did in Pascal, which was kind of like in the 80s, the language of choice. There, there was like Poland, Pascal. Um, they were among the first coming out with object-oriented coding and things like that. And uh, also I, I learned that language in my uh, engineering school, um, uh, programming mainframe computers, so the Perkin Elmer at that time, things like that. So I was very familiar, and then later on I switched to C, but um, that was not a big deal. It was just a different syntax you had to learn. Yeah, they're all basically the same. You just have to just you just have to yeah. learn the differences. You know what you want to do, but you just have to figure out how to how to put it into code. Yes. Yeah. So on on category three, it's devices uh, about layout control. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, that's kind of like the next level. So category two is you decode something from Loconet or DCC and make something move. And category three is actually when you start going back and forth with these things. So you, you now start uh, uh, looking into maybe signaling systems that take information from various occupation sensors and, and drive signals. So you have all of a sudden you have to deal with two, three um, uh, device categories, so to speak, several controllers involved, maybe a computer involved somewhere, somewhere, and you just start responding to messages, you, you receive messages, do some calculations, so you need to have an idea um, uh, on, on algorithms, for example, how are signals controlled, right? How do you generate an aspect, things like that. And then you have to send this calculated information to the next device, which maybe then displays the aspect or something like that. So to me, that's an entire new category. We are now talking network already on the model array road, but then it can go beyond that and you start sending stuff maybe to the internet or you, uh, you you build an interface that you can say, okay, Google, start up my layout or something like that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's that's an entire category in itself, I think. Yeah. Well, there's probably more categories that we could think of, but yeah, that, that's something in the future. Exactly, that that is really coming up, and that is going to add more to the complexities. All the artificial intelligence stuff. Now. Yeah, yeah. More data. They, real big data handling. Um, I'm looking into a few of these things. There are some promising stuff you can do. For example, block occupation of an entire hidden yard with a camera. Just think about it. No more, no more individual sensors in the track, but just a camera that watches your, I don't know, 10 tracks or whatsoever for 10 feet long. And you identify not only if the track is occupied, but actually what train is sitting there. All these things become possible, but that's adding a whole new layer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, Hans, that was very interesting uh, learning about the three categories. I have to agree with you on the on the one on the category one where you know you just have to start out from the very beginning and not go over your head in uh, trying to cre recreate uh, a task that uh, you don't know anything about. I mean, I've, I've seen on the forums where people uh, go and ask questions about how, they, how they're how they going to operate uh, 40 servos with uh, RS-485 and CMRI. And when the uh, person asks them questions about it, it's obvious that they don't know anything about what they're Yes. what they're trying to do so so they will start st uh, storing in a black hole right yeah yeah right <laughs> so we'll probably do more videos on this and discuss this a little bit more i'd like to have you back on the channel and maybe uh we could do something on your channel also so i want to thank everybody for stopping by uh, i'll put uh Han's channel in the description and all the links for everything in the description thank you very much hans I really appreciate it. It was good talking to you. Yeah, it was interesting. Let's see what the um, what the users will say, and then we see. Yeah. Yeah, we will go from there. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Hans. <laughs> Thank you. All Have right. A good day. Take a look for more discussions with Hans Tanner about Arduino and the Internet of Toy Trains. So until the next time, we'll see ya.